Hello America, my name is Matthew B. Moore and I'm here on a mission to keep you from writing crap. And today I'm gonna to talk about one of the greatest sci-fi films of all time. And that would be Star Wars Episode V, The Empire Strikes Back. I could sum this movie up with a single word review. Awesome. Ah, 1980. <clears throat> the anticipation. You'd seen Star Wars back in 77. And when you're a kid and you're seven years old and you're waiting for the sequel to your favorite movie to come out, it really takes a long time. But three years is really a long time, or two and a half, or however long the hell it took them to make it. They had to sit there and rake in all that money off of Star Wars and all, figured out that they could, you know, make even more money off of toy sales. And well, I'll just go ahead and say this. When I was a kid, you know, you had to have Star Wars, Star Wars toys. But they were probably one of the shittiest toys ever made. I thought Micronauts were much cooler. Star Wars had, you know, taken the world by storm. Everything. Star Wars had its own disco song for crying out loud. Star Wars toothpaste, Star Wars toothbrush, Star Wars shampoo, Star Wars soap, Star Wars lunchbox, Star Wars lunch pail. <laughs> uh, Star Wars dinner tray, comic books, figures, playing cards, all of that crap. A huge mountain of capitalism. Working well and still not yet to destroy the soul of Star Wars. Anyway, and then Empire comes out and everybody's flipping their shit. And for good reason, Empire's a really incredibly fun to watch movie. And it's a great sequel to Star Wars. Um, it locks right in, pretty seamless, just picks up from where they left off. And hey, we've got another new adventure. And basically, the gist of it is, the Empire's pissed. Uh, the Rebellion blew up their gigantic Death Star that could blow up planets and sort of took their nuts away. And so, I mean, the Empire still has big nuts, as, as they show you at the very beginning, where, you know, there's gigantic Star Destroyers, and they've got a gigantic fleet, and they're still very much in control. But uh, the Rebels are kicking ass, and they have to be secret, and they have to fight really tough and be in little tiny places, but they can still stick it to the Empire, and they still got places they can go. They're still in the game. Luke is becoming a Jedi man. Han and Leia are starting to sort of fall for each other. And the Empire basically chases them around the galaxy. To tell you any more about it, if you've never seen it, it's sort of uncool. Because it's still one of those movies that, if you don't know what happens next, man, it's enthralling. The music is incredible. The cinematography, the, the level of cin cinematography to pull off the movie had to be incredible anyway. The production design had to be incredible. Uh, you know, the robot work, the, the, the costuming, everything had to be right on point. And the thing was, they had the money to do it, and they were also at sort of a, a sci-fi crest, where they were sort of at the crest of the wave of what sci-fi was looking like. Everything in, in, in Empire is just like, ooh, I got you, ooh, I got you, ooh, I got you, ooh, I got you, and you're going to be back for more. And I want to be back for more, and I didn't want it to end. Um, that, again, is the essence of filmmaking. And it's kind of funny, you know, you're, I go and see one, Star Wars when I'm seven, and then I go see Empire when I'm ten, and I'm still completely just caught up. I, I, there is very little penis in Empire. Mark Hamill's acting is slightly penis, and uh, and there's some really cheesy penis lines in this film, but they don't distract from the overall badassery of it. It will still go down in history as being one of the coolest sci-fi movies, but it also goes down in history as being one of the most kick-ass sequels ever. Because it is. It is prob it, it might be better than Star Wars. <coughs> there's something very dark and horrible coming. And there's really nothing we can do about it. So we might as well kick back to 1980. On the definition of cool. Because Empire was cool. Just say, just say. Oh, did I mention they sold t-shirts and pajamas and sleeping bags and tents? My bad. Anyway, you could count 1980 as being pretty cool. Had Empire, some ACDC, some Pink Floyd in there every little bit, you know? A little Funky Town, Dukes of Hazard. Sup? Not a bad time for, you know, phenomenal artistic works of cinema and music. Anyway, Empire kicks ass. Check it out. It rocks. Kind of like this. Listen to this on the way to see Empire. I remember having this when I was 10. Actually, my stepdad had it, and we'd listen to it while we fought with the little shitty Star Wars figures. Red Smart America. Enjoy.